Well, I'm just a guy who travels round. I play guitar from town to town. And one day I landed up at the old Drow Hall. It was there that I met the old O.C. He made me sign an indemnity. Then he said, jolly glad you've answered to the call. So they packed me up in a battered jeep with all them rat packs in a heap. And I held on like mad to my guitar. We set off on a long tar road and the jeep was growling with a load. And they told me that the trip to the sharp end wouldn't be far. I got the entertainer's sharp and blues The entertainer's sharp and blues Now to Missouri that road was good And the jeep was jumping so she should At times I thought that the gearbox would fall out I'm very happy to say I've managed to connect with somebody famous today um, not every day I get to talk to famous singers, but I'm with John Edmund, who lives just outside Bella Bella, what used to be Walmart's, in what used to be the Eastern Transvaal, I suppose. Um, John's on a game ranch there, and um, really good to connect with you today, John. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Hollis. Thank you. Pleasure. John, uh, just tell us a bit about your early life, how you ended up in the Rhodesian Army. Yeah, well, uh, I was born in Northern Rhodesia. Uh, Northern Rhodesia, now Zambia, used to be part of the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. And uh, the, um, the Federal Army, you know, when I became of age, I was sent off to do my national service in Bulawayo, in Southern Rhodesia, which is now Rhodesia. Yes. I did my, my national training there, and then I was posted to the Territorial Army, which was a uh, which is a call-up thing if there's any problems. You have to do so many weeks, camps and stuff. And if there's any problems, they call you up. So that was way back in 1956. I started my national service. In 1957, I went back to work on the mine in Luantia, on the Copper Gulf, uh, where, incidentally, my dad was a pioneer. He'd been there since the mine started. And uh, I was just uh, going along doing my trade. I started off in with, uh, punch cards and uh, sort of the beginning of computers. And then uh, the trouble started in Northern Rhodesia when the Federation started to break up and there was a lot of uh, activity, political activity and sabotage and all that kind of thing and riots. So, of course, we were called up on a regular basis to either put down a riot or do a show of force or do a raid or patrol around and that sort of thing backwards and forwards. And of course, we had to do our uh, range training in the meantime. So we were quite busy uh, in the Territorial Army. And um, then 1960, the Belgian Congo got their independence very suddenly, like almost overnight. And of course, uh, they went crazy in Katanga which was only a few miles from, from our border. Well, Katanga was bordering right on the top of that. And of course, the 3rd Battalion, that I was, a, I was a member of the 3rd Battalion, in those days, the Royal Rhodesia Regiment, it wasn't the Rigid Rhodesia Regiment, it was the Royal Rhodesia Regiment. And uh, actually, at that same time, around that area, um, while I was doing my national service, the Suez problem came up. Between there was a big, uh, a very a lot of tensions over the Suez Canal. Yes, and they were calling the soldiers up from all over the all over the Commonwealth. So I'm just going back a little bit, 1957, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and we were at, uh, at the airport ready to go to Suez, and then they stood us down. Yes. So I nearly went to Suez, but anyway, going back to Copper Belt, the Congo thing flared up, and they sent our third battalion up to the Congo border for a couple of reasons. First of all, they thought that the force publique, which was the rebellious uh, crowd in Katanga, were gonna spill over into Northern Rhodesia and try and take over our mines and that sort of thing. And the other uh, role that we played there was getting the, the refugees over the border, very much like Ukraine is that right at this moment. There were so many women and children and, you know, uh, 
and they took back roads through the bush to get into Northern Rhodesia to escape the horse public that were shooting people at random, not only blacks, but, but white people as well. So a lot of um, bullet-ridden cars came over and a lot of traumatic families. We brought them over the border and, of course, we did our patrols along that border. So uh, we were quite active uh, in that role. But while uh, I was actually a section leader, I was, had the magnificent rank of Lance Corporal, and uh, I was on a patrol one time, and I, I came across this trading store, and there was this old guitar in the window. I couldn't play the guitar or anything like that. And I took this guitar with me on, back to my base, and another guy showed me how to tune it and showed me how to play my first chord. And my section were very down in the dumps, you know, they, they needed a little bit of morale boosting. And I just had this flair for writing parody, uh, parodies on, on other songs, you know, bongo, 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 I don't want to leave the Congo. Used to cheer <laughs> the guys up, no end. So uh, it, it, it got better and better and I could play two chords and then I played three chords. And I wrote a whole lot of nonsense you know, around what was happening up there. And uh, then after that was all over, the Federation broke up. And half of the army went to southern Rhodesia and some of it stayed in northern Rhodesia, Zambia. But most of the officers went and joined the Rhodesia army. And I, things went very good in, in Zambia. So I tried to get a job in southern Rhodesia and I couldn't get any job or, or job description. So I went south to to South Africa. And then they they declared UDI. Southern Rhodesia declared UDI. And then the Bush War started. And some of the officers that had been had gone to Southern Rhodesia remembered me. And morale was pretty low at the beginning of the Bush War. And somebody tracked me down in Joburg and said, Would you like to come back to you? give us a hand and come and sing for the guys? A lot of my friends were still in the, in the bush war, but I was in South Africa. So I said, of course. So I went up to Salisbury, to King George VI barracks, KG6 they called it. And they gave me this liaison officer. And they said, this guy's going to take you to all the shop and you're going to go. You're not going to stand on the stage. You're going to go with a helicopter and a truck and a Land Rover to all these forward bases. And you're going to sing all that nonsense that you sang to those guys on the Congo border. <laughs> so they actually hit me with my rifle and uh, rifle and guitar and liaison officer, who was a real, uh, real tough little officer. His name was Tom Douglas, was a, uh, a lieutenant at that time. And uh, of course, I had sort of longish hair then because I'd gotten out of the army and I was trying to uh, do my trade in, in, in South Africa, looking for recording contracts, which I never got, and knocking on doors and playing in, in, in the folk clubs and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me funny with this uh, long hair and he had the short back and sides. But anyway, eventually we became very, very good friends, me and Tom. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, he progressed through the Rhodesian Army and he ended up as a lieutenant colonel. Yes. But going back to that, it was... In the 70s, and I was regularly called up. And I think I've been in hundreds of bases, Mukumbura and all those, those hotspots. And I've met a lot of guys, helicopter pilots, and even to this day, we, we become firm friends. But, uh, basically, that, that's how my involvement was with the Rhodesian Bush Board. But while I was doing these things, I started a flair for writing. Uh, uh, serious stuff, not bongo, bongo, bongo stuff. And I started writing my own songs uh, and I wrote about people and happenings and things, not only funny things, but uh, funny things, but traumatic things. And I had all these songs and I went to a recording company and I said, you know, I think there's a need to put out a record uh, of all these songs, and I was turned down, and then somebody said, look, I think that's a darn good idea. So he gave me a budget of 500 grand, 
So they said, you put a record together and you'll, you'll release one in Rhodesia and see what happens. So I got some of my mates together, all my, uh, musicians. I said, guys, you've got to do a couple of free sessions for me. And we put together an album called Troopy Songs. Yeah. I think it was about 12 songs on it. And it, it was some historical things about the Rhodesian army. And uh, I can't remember all the titles that were on it. They released it in Rhodesia and it was a massive hit. So the record company said, well, what about another one? Here's another 500 bucks, do another one. <laughs> so I did Trippy Songs Volume 2. That was a smash hit. Trippy Songs Volume 3. Trippy Songs Volume 4. And eventually that, that took us right through the whole religion. Bush War it was about 15 years. Well, I can't remember how many years it was until finally uh, the the transition into Zimbabwe. So when I when I stopped doing that, I, I, I'd already got now a, a recording contract in, in South Africa. I was uh, doing pop songs and that sort of thing. And the record companies dropped the records like a hot brick because it wasn't really politically mm -hmm. correct for a record company to have uh, mm -hmm. those trippy songs. Yes. So I went to them and I said, well, look, can I have them? And they said, look, you could have them back for what we paid you to do it. So the, for 2,000 Rand, I got all my trippy songs, tapes, and all the masters and the copyright back. So I started releasing them myself. And they started all the, a lot of the guys that now immigrated to Australia, New Zealand, United States, UK, all over the world, Poland. And I started getting requests for these records of ex-soldiers that were out in the United States and that sort of thing. So I started my own little tape company and started selling them. And then they said, look, we want, we want you to come to America and do a concert for all the guys. And, 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 and I went to Las Vegas of all places to, to do concerts for, for the guys that were expats out there. Mm -hmm. And Teresa, my wife, uh, she is a real trooper, you know, she did all the sound and encouraged me. And one of our first tours was to Las Vegas. And who was on the tour? Who was there? Mr. Insmith. Oh, wow. So we met Mr. Insmith and his lovely wife, Janet. So I did the Las Vegas show. I played at the Holiday Inn in, in Las Vegas. And across the road was Caesar's Palace, and there was Julio Iglesias across the road. Yes, little me, John Edmund, with three chords in the Holiday Inn with a couple of hundred roadies and Mr. Smith doing this concert. Anyway, I got back to South Africa, and lo and behold, somebody in Australia said, we want you in Australia. So we packed our bags and off we went to Australia, and we, we toured all around Australia, Sydney, uh, oh. Brisbane, right across Perth, and of course, Mr. Smith was there as well. And he said to me one day, he said, you know, there's roadies everywhere. He said, he'd just been to Alice Springs. He says, it's right in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of, of, of Australia. He said, you had to go to Alice Springs. And he got to the hotel and he says, and guess who the chef was in the hotel? It was the cook from the RLI. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote that song, Roadies Everywhere, <clears throat> which became a huge hit all over the place. And then the UK guy said, you've got to come to the UK now. So we toured the UK, Wales, England, Scotland, back to South Africa. And then it was America, we want you again, back to Las Vegas. Not to the oh. Holiday Inn, it was another hotel, which was a little bit more upmarket, across the road from the, um, what was it, the... Hard Rock Cafe, yeah. Hard Rock Cafe across the road. Anyway, did a wonderful show there. There were more roadies, more and more and more. And we got back to South Africa and then back to Australia. Wow. By this time, my young son uh, was able to play the guitar and he accompanied me on guitar. So it was father and son playing in Brisbane and Sydney. So that, those were good memories. And since then, we've done many, many tours. We twice to America, twice to Australia, three times to Australia, actually. Uh, twice to America, and of course, UK many, many times. 
every year the Rhodesians, you know, if it doesn't rain in England, they have a thing called the July Bride. Oh, yeah. And there's thousands of roadies attend that thing. So we played at a couple of those July brides. And they have it every year. Even this year, I think they've, they've probably got the July. Uh, they have, actually, uh, the July bride this year. So revisions never die. You know, they just keep going. <laughs> and, uh, of course, when I got, after the Trippy songs, I wrote a, an album called Two Bees in Exile. Okay. And that was like... Uh, it was a sort of bitter and twisted, not bitter and twisted, but it was like the summing up of how we got sold down the river and all that sort of thing. After that, I recorded quite a few other Rhodesian type of albums. One was called Friends, Rhodes Country. Yeah. That was quite bitter and twisted, and it was like about uh, all the politicians in, in Zimbabwe. Then I wrote one called Heritage which was just a, an album about the towns in, in Rhodesia. Yes, yes. I wrote several albums after that, um, several albums about Rhodesia, because all the subjects were fantastic, not only war songs, but yes. little love songs and, and little funny songs. And wrote a song about uh, traveling around Rhodesia in an old car, all the yes. names of the towns. I've heard that. Now, one. the towns have been changed now in South Africa. Uh, Wombos is now Bella Bella and yes. Petersburg is now Pakwani and Mukhafong and places like that. So I wrote a song about all the, the towns of Rhodesia. Uh, the, the whole car journey, starting at uh, Chirundu, going all the way down into Marindellas, up to the, the highlands, across to Port Victoria, down to Bulawayo, back to Quickly, then to Kariba and sailing the old car on a ferry and then back to Bulawayo. So uh, I like performing those things for Rhodesian gets to get get togethers, and there's, there's always a lot of them. Yeah, John, all the time. John, you've yeah. obviously, I mean, you sing a lot about the history. So you've obviously read quite extensively and you and you know the history of the country very well. Yes, yes. I've, I've, I'm actually quite a, an avid historian. I, I love history. And since I've been back in South Africa, I've uh, written about the Boer War, the Anglo-Boer War. Yes. I've gone to the battlefields and, and I've written about, I've written four albums on, on, on the Boer War. And it, it, it's, the historical associations are, are very strong still. People come from all over the Commonwealth to come and see yes. where their great grandfathers and grandfathers fought mm. in the Boer War. Mm. You know, there's also the Zulu Wars, uh, Islam Dwana. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, I'm doing a lot of stuff about wildlife as well. That's one of my passions is, is conservation. And I love writing about conservation. So I've uh, just brought out a new album, which will be coming out soon. It's about climate change and that sort of thing. It's called Eco Cry for the for the planet. So look, all in all, uh, unless I've I've written over five hundred songs, eh? and uh, I think about three hundred have been recorded somewhere by somebody. John, so am and, I uh, right? When you were out in the field, you got your inspiration from people you met and um, events, things that you saw, uh, and yes. then you went back thought about it and uh, put a song together. Yes, absolutely. That, anything, you know, anything that grabs our fancy. Well, it, it hasn't got to be dramatic, but it could be funny. It could be mm. romantic. It could be historical. Anything grabs my fancy. I, I love to write about it and put it down in, in a theme. So there's war stuff. There's wildlife stuff. There's all sorts of stuff. But actually, at the moment, um, I've, one of my, my uh, sort of, not hobbies, but the thing that I'm very concerned about is the extinction of certain animals. Mm -hmm. You know, I wrote about the blue whale, I wrote about all sorts of animals. At the moment, at this time, there's a little little beastie called the pangolin. You know, the rhino is being big. Rhino, I've written a couple of songs about that. And as a matter of fact, years ago, I met Rupert Fothergill, the father of all game rangers. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote a song for him way back in 1975 about rhino poaching, right. which is still going on. But anyway, at this time, this little animal called the pangolin is, is under great stress mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's the only little animal in the world that's got scales. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not a, a reptile, it's an animal, a warm-blooded animal, and it's being poached big time uh, from uh, people from the East. Mm -hmm. Because in China and Vietnam, they think the scales are like rhino horn, and they, they can cure anything from asthma to gout to cancer. And they, 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 they're poaching it to death. Mm -hmm. so there's a, a, an organization called Scales, which is a protection organization for the Banglin. And I've written the song for them. It's just been released. It's called Stand for the Banglin. And in the middle of this month, I'll be going down to Hootstrake and I'll be doing a, a, a charity concert there for the Banglin people. And of course, there's thousands of, thousands of roadies down in that part of the world. Mm. So it's going to be a roadie Pangolin show. <laughs> so well, I'll be singing the, the new song, Stand for the Pangolin. And of course, I'll be doing all the Rhodesian favorites. I uh, wish I was a blue job band. And Salome, Jennifer, and me about the car. And I'll be doing uh, Back in the Sticks and Roadies Everywhere. And it'll be a think, great. I don't think those songs will, will ever die. Not, not while there are any of us around uh, and i'm sure they're gonna yeah, you know honestly you'll be surprised who's picking up on them mate. i was in the shower it was about a week ago or was it two weeks ago i was in the shower to read and said there's a call for you from germany i said who is it he said he said no it's a guy called klaus or helmut or something like that he wants to talk to you i said but i'm in the shower she, she said quickly dry yourself he's on the line popped out of the shower put a towel sat on the bed said, hello, Klaus or Helmut, I can't remember what his name was. He said, I want to talk to you about the song, George. I wrote a song called George. It's all about an armored car. And it's strange that it came about. I was in Antali doing a television show for Rhodesian television. And all of the cast of the show were driven around the streets of I'm Tali on armored cars. And those armored cars were the old ferrets. Oh, yes. Uh, a, a very old thing, you know. Mm. But uh, all done up by the Rhodesians, and they were fantastic little things, you know. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, all the cars had names, you know. They were called Doris and Priscilla and Penelope. But the car that I was on didn't have a name. I said to the driver and the, and the gunner, I said, what's, it, what's the car's name? He, they said, it hasn't got a name. So they said, give it a name. And the first name I thought about was George. I said, what about a guy's name for the honor car? <laughs> there was a lady standing there. I said, have you got any nail varnish? She said, yep. I took the nail varnish and I painted George on this car. <laughs> and then, of course, wrote a song, George. Anyway, this guy, Helmut, that got me out of the shower, he said, my favorite song is George. He said, but I want to know what, I want to know what is a gomo? I said, that's a mountain. He says, what is a land? I said, that's a land rover. And he said, what does the, the word mush mean? I said, that means nice. And uh, he asked me what it all means. Anyway. Uh, I had a chat with this guy. It was very refreshing. Not only was I wet, but it was fantastic and refreshing to talk to this guy from Germany. And I, I, it was a great honor. Anyway, about a week ago, my son came to me and he said, Dad, have a look at this. There's a guy playing your song, George. He's an American guy. He doesn't know what he's singing about, but he loves it. And he's playing it. It's now on YouTube. So there's a guy playing George on YouTube. And he's doing a great job of it, so, but he doesn't know what Bush and Gomo and what a landy is, but he's singing it away. Boy. So I can't tell you how that makes me feel. It's just marvelous. I mean, we've got letters from Czechoslovakia, Ukraine. Guys from Ukraine. Really? Writing, 
somehow the some of the songs they identify with that. You know? And uh, it's, 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 it's such an honor to get these these uh, letters and, and mails and stuff from from people out there that, that they find something in the songs. And they were yeah. just done on a shoestring, you know, with some of my mates playing, or good musicians, of course. And in those days, the recordings were analog recordings. They were done on tape with very good microphones. And, 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 and the clarity is quite phenomenal. And it's it, very simple. It's not that yeah. complicated. So it all started finding a guitar in a trading store somewhere on the Congo border. That's correct. That's a hell of a, that's a, hell of a story. But, um, yeah, it's fantastic. And that poor guitar got stolen. I was sort of worrying about that, you know, it got stolen. <coughs> but uh, I don't know if you can see the background. Yes. Yeah, the guitar. Yeah. I still got that Fender guitar that I, when I upgraded, when I started going to the, the, the bush war in, um, in Rhodesia, I bought this Fender Fender guitar. If you look on on, on a record covers, you'll see I've always got that guitar uh, with me. It's, okay. Yeah, okay. it's a Fender Malibu. There's there's only one left in South Africa. And there's very few around in the world. But that thing has been dropped into helicopters, and it's I think it's almost had a bullet hole through it. You know, one ambush that uh, where they missed. You know, but but. Yeah, it's been around with me, and it's it's very very dear to me that Fender guitar. But it's a pretty that old. As a matter of fact, that guitar that I bought in the trading store it was on the northern Rhodesian side. That trading store. Uh, it was made in Joburg. It was called a Trek guitar. A Trek, T R E K. Really? They had yeah. a picture of a picture of boy on the front. Wow. And that went everywhere with me. Yeah. John, just yeah. cast your your mind back to the. To the war days and um, some of the more sort of memorable concerts. I mean, you you did so many. I, I don't think anybody's done as much as you have to to keep soldiers and airmen and policemen happy. And uh, I, yeah. I take my hat off to you. But but um, just tell us about some of the the places you went to and 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 memories of of those times. Uh, some of those. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you about. You know, everybody talks about Mukumbura. Mm-hmm. I think every soldier in the Rhodesian army was stationed there as punishment. <laughs> so I had to go to Mukumbura, and when I got there, the place was, it's in the Zambezi Valley sort of thing, and the place was flooded. And we had to sleep on the ant heap, you know, because it was just flooded. Like you see in this climate change and floods all over the world, it was just flooded and mosquitoes everywhere. And we, I slept on the ant heap, and, and, and there was a generator there. And, and the pub was called the Mukumbura Surf Club. That was a little tent where the guys used to have beers in that. It, it was quite a forward base. Mm. But from there, that's where a lot of um, incursions came through. And they cleared a big piece of bush there. Uh, like, um, so as you could see, if these guys were coming across. And they used like herbicides. They flew with airplanes and they, they sprayed it with herbicides to defoliate the the, the bush, so you could see better. And uh, every time one of these planes would come over, the guy would say, "Put your hand over your meston, otherwise you're going to get poisoned in your meston." So we just had beans, and then I ate with the guys, and it was wonderful. But that was quite a memorable occasion to be in Mukumbura and be at the Mukumbura Surf Club. <laughs> and maybe another one that I'll remember: they uh, flew me with a helicopter. From Mukumbura to a place called Rusambo or Rushinga. It was in between two places called Rusambo and Rushinga. And there was a, a few uh, uh, white soldiers and a few black soldiers, the RAR. And I did my little concert there. But I had come up with, my, with Tom Douglas, my liaison officer, as far as... Uh, um, Mount Darwin. And from there, we took airplanes and helicopters to take me to all the various bases. Right. And the people of Antali had sent a big, what we call a hay box. It's a massive trunk with ice in it and a whole lot of chickens. 
for for their their um, Fourth Battalion guys. I don't know how many chickens, but that whole Land Rover was just this big hay box. That Land Rover, I don't know how the hell it got from Antali to Mount Darwin, but it did. But of course, we couldn't take the, the hay box in the airplanes or, or, or the helicopters. So we left it in in Mount Darwin. And when I got to Rusambo, it was just before Christmas time. I was standing on a table or sitting on a table in the in their pub. It was called Peter's P Inn. That was the name of the they always gave their, their pubs a name. It was just a tent where there was a couple of beers and I was in Peter's P Inn playing and I, I said to the sergeant major, I said to him, Oh, it's a pity about the chickens. He says, What chickens? And the helicopter pilot, a guy called Roger Watt, who I'm still very, very much in, in touch with. Roger actually comes to see me. He was the helicopter pilot. As a matter of fact, Roger's been decorated for great mm. He's such a humble bloke. Mm. But Roger said, where are the chickens? I said, they're in Mount Darwin. <laughs> it was nighttime now, hey, Thomas? He says, I'm going to fetch them birds. He started up his alouette, and he took off out of that spot. And he says, keep your lights on when I come back. You'll hear me coming back. And he went over to, to Mount Darwin. I don't know how far it is. You can look on the map. But anyway, flew there. He put this hay box in the chopper. Now, um, an alouette can take five guys. Eh? And on the back seat, there's, there's no seats. It's just a big plank that you sit on. No doors, nothing. Um, he put this hay box in that thing, strapped it down, and he brought it back. And that chopper, he brought that chopper in, in the dark. And we put some torches on, and he, Roger put the chopper down. They took the hay box out, took it to Peter's P in, put it on the table. They said, okay, John, you throw the chickens out to the guys. And there was enough chickens to go around. So I stood on the table, and like rugby balls, I, I chucked these chickens out, and they caught them. They started a fire straight away, stuck a stick in, started cooking their chicken for Christmas. Oh, wow. And... Uh, I had a big chat with the Rhodesian African rifle guys, the, the black guys. And what a fantastic bunch of soldiers they were. Yes. They, they sort of joined in with us and they loved, they loved my songs. And I sang a couple of Zulu ones as well, you know, I did Shosha Loza and stuff like that. I just loved that. And uh, I used to sing a song called My Ding a Ling, Your Ding a Ling. And they used to say, Sing My Ding a Ring, Your Ding a Ring. <laughs> Well, at that time, you know, I had a, uh, a, hit, a hit song in the pop, pop charts in Rhodesia called Pasadena. Okay. And this big sergeant major came up to me and he says to me, Mr. Edmund, he says, can you play the cookhouse song? I said, the cookhouse song? He said, yes. He says, he's playing it on the radio. I said, the cookhouse song? No, I can't. He says, no, no, man. It's called, it's a long, long way to pass the dinner. <laughs> pass the dinner. <laughs> well, that is just the best. So every time I say pass the dinner, I'd always put in a verse, it's a long, long way to pass the dinner. <laughs> oh, man. Now, I can tell you hundreds of stories, though, sir. About all the places I've been to. Uh, John, yeah. I don't suppose the there are many places in that country you haven't been to. Yeah, no, but it's, it's, it's been an honor for me, and uh, I've, I've, I've had a fantastic life. If I get popped off tomorrow, it's, it's okay. It's been pretty good in a long way. Well, John, yeah. let me just say again, uh, I salute you. Um, I, as I say, I don't think anybody's brought as much joy to the lives of, of people from that country as you have. So you've put an enormous amount in to all of our lives. I mean, I don't think any of us, there's anybody out there who doesn't know who John Edmund is and hasn't enjoyed well, the music. Yeah, as long as it's not police fire, it's all right. <laughs> John, tell us, how do, we, how, um, how do we get hold of your stuff? I mean, I, I'm sure there's a website, um, but I'm sure... Yes, uh, uh, honest, uh, it's, it's a pretty easy one. It's uh, www.johnedmond, spelled with an O, Mm -hmm. johnedmond.co.za 
and from there, I think anybody will be able to download or, or find out how to do it. Actually, all my songs are on on most uh, music platforms, Spotify, all that. So it can be downloaded. And of course, a lot of the stuff's on YouTube as well. If they want to have a look, we've done a lot of videos. Okay. Uh, uh, the, there's a Trippy Songs video about some of the some of the songs and highlights, and and there's actual footage on those videos. It was made by a friend of mine called Paul Schiff. He was my steel guitar player, but he's a great uh, cameraman and photographer, and he put together a little video for me. And uh, all those are on there. Uh, there's about 50 different videos on stuff that I've done, you know, wildlife stuff and the military stuff and the bull war. We've done a lot of bull war videos as well. So you can okay. get it down on YouTube, go to okay. my website. Okay. And so, but thank you for that. Thank you very much indeed. John, one last, one last question um, before I let you go. Just looking back on the on the Rhodesian experience, who were the, this might be a difficult question, but the people or personalities that made the biggest impression on you? I mean, you must have met a lot of soldiers and politicians and airmen along the way. People that, um, that made a big impress, uh, impression on you. Well, I think, I think let's start off with Ian Douglas Smith. I was very, very lucky to get some tapes of his, of his, his he did an interview and I, I managed to get the copyright for those tapes. The company also dropped that like a hot brick and I, they gave it to me. So I've got Ian Douglas Smith, but he was probably one of the most memorable guys I've met. And of course, soldiers like uh, even Peter Walls, you know, the, the general Peter Walls, what a down to earth, fantastic man he was. And Ron Reed Daly, I mean, we, we go right back to my uh, national service. He was a, a sergeant in the yes. one of our sergeants in national service, and I've been through the war with Ron. And uh, latterly, before he passed away, he used to come up to my farm and come and see me. We had fantastic times. Ron Reed Daly, Peter Walls, Ian Douglas Smith, mm -hmm. Tom Douglas, my liaison officer, is Roger Watt, the pilot, is. Mm. Lots of other pilots, Bud Cocroft, also singing himself. Yes. And of course, Clem Follett, uh, yes. Rhodesians Never Die, the guy that wrote that. Yes. He was, he's actually Ian Smith's son in law. Yes. And uh, Clem and I were great mates. We, we did the folk clubs in Joburg. He also came to Joburg looking for, to make his fortune. And he wrote some brilliant, brilliant songs about Rhodesia. And unfortunately, Clem has passed away. Uh, and uh, we miss him. Yes. And this Mike Westcott, he was an announcer, yes. radio yes. announcer, he stood around and he wrote some, some fun songs for, for the radio. And then there's, there's a lot of ladies and girls, the girl singers like Sheila Taylor and who else? I mean, there's just millions of people and, I'd like and, to mention. Them all. And Rex, Rex and Tarr? Course, Did you have anything to do with Rex Tarr? Oh, Rex Tarr, indeed. <laughs> Very much. No, Rex. Uh, as a matter of fact, Rex, before he passed away, well, after he passed away, he, his wife, his widow, asked me to to handle his his material, you know, his stuff. So we put it on a on a CD and we marketed it for her, and we sent sent her the royalties. Okay. So, uh, but he, you know, it's just sort of petered out a little bit, and it's just a little bit sensitive sometimes in South Africa. Yes. He's he's, 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 he's he's very very blunt. He was, but extremely funny. And, and as a lot of, as a matter of fact, a lot of my African staff loved those things. I mean, they just loved Rex. So. <laughs> yeah. Rex Tarr. I mean, of course, oh, this Johnny Haswell. He was a great comedian as well. And of course, the police, the BSAP. They are amazing. They kept their thing going, the BSAP, the RLI Association. Mm. There's all the guys that ran those, Rob Bristow, still running it, and Alan Strachan, mm. who's gone to the UK now, the RLI Association, the so Loose Scouts Association, Dale Collett, the guy, the hero that was wounded in the, one of the operations. In a wheelchair, he came all the way from Botswana, in his special car to come to my farm and I did a concert there 
he came on his wheel on his special bucky lying down in the bucky he's had especially and then into the wheelchair he wouldn't take a bed he said i'll sleep in the hangar no problem uh, when i got to south africa as a matter of fact i was roped in by the south african army to that's why i'm wearing this jacket uh, to to fly i was a bit of a pilot as well so i flew for their their air wing the commander air wing it was also quite exciting and Teresa was my spotter so uh, i was in, on active service basically and the only reason they 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 stopped me was because they the commando was disbanded and then i was over 60 and they said i can't fly when i'm over 60 but that went on for another 15 years so wow. but that was that's the rules of the the army so that was also memorable you know being involved with, with the south african army as well i went to their their shop in i've been to um Bangwa, Rotfontein, um, all over South West Africa, went to entertain their soldiers as well. And I volunteered for the Mount Horse region. Okay. You know, bugger for punishment. So, yeah. Well, John, hats off, hats off to you for all, all you've done for hundreds of thousands of people. Um, thank you so much. Uh, well, look, thank you very much indeed for having me on your, on your show. And I hope it will be good and somebody will get a laugh out of it or a memory. And, uh, and thank you very much indeed for, for going to the trouble of putting me on. No, John, thanks for your time. It's uh, my pleasure and I'm really pleased we've had a chance to talk about this. And um, I hope we stay in touch and I hope we meet in the not too distant future one way or the other. Good. Good. Okay, excellent. There's a concert nearby where you are. I'll be Maybe there. Maybe buy a ticket. I'll Come be along. there, John. Okay, okay, my friend. Thanks, Anas. Thanks, Anas. Stay there. well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Torn by the thorns, burned by the sun, foot sore and weary, the job to be done, suffering cold. Danger and thirst, no thought of himself, his country comes first. The troopy, the troopy, the pride of the land, his image was carved by an old sculptor's hand. Preachers and poets have all paid respect, and the nation will too, if they never forget. His statue was placed on such holy ground With comrades in arms all gathered around All were so proud that one of them cried For the troopy looked just like a friend who had died The troopy, the troopy, the pride of the land His image was carved